come to the definition of the natural numbers. And so finally we get numbers in this theory of mathematics that we're building uh, from sets. So the first thing that we want to do, uh, well, let's think about what would we want to take for our definition of zero? All we have at our disposal are sets. So we want to come up with some sort of set that should represent the number zero. And uh, although we haven't really defined what it, you know, numbers of elements mean, uh, to start off from our conceptual inspiration, it would make sense to identify numbers with sets containing that many elements. Well, there's only one set uh, with no elements in it, that is the empty set. So we are going to define the number zero to be the empty set. So we're actually defining numbers as sets in this case. Uh, now, there are many choices for what set we might take for the number one. In fact, just take any set containing one element, and that one element could be any sort of uh, crazy set that we could build with the axioms we already have. Uh, but of course, in the name of simplicity, uh, we're going to take a the simplest uh, possible set with one element. Well, the uh, the simplest set we know is the empty set, so we may as well that may as well make that the one element of our set. So we're going to define the number one to be the set containing the empty set. Notice under the, this definition, uh, this actually gives us the one as the set containing zero. And so since there are even more choices for what we may take uh, for our uh, inspiration as to what we're going to define the number two to be. Uh, this uh, gives us one possible suggestion since uh, one is the set containing uh, all the numbers smaller than it. Again, we haven't properly defined smaller, uh, but then perhaps we should define two to be the set containing all the numbers smaller than that. So if we write this out in terms of the empty set, uh, this is just the set containing the empty set and the set containing the empty set. And if we were to continue this pattern, uh, we would define the number n to be the set of uh, all natural numbers uh, previously defined. Now we haven't been particularly rigorous though, because it doesn't, uh, you know, how do we gather up all of these natural numbers together? We would like to have all the natural numbers in one set. We'd like to reason about them as a whole and, uh, you know, we also haven't defined this, what it means to be smaller for natural numbers. We haven't been precise about this. So we're still going to have to do some work uh, to establish that uh, all of this, uh, that the natural numbers exist as a set. Uh, one other thing I want to uh, point out to you first is uh, suppose we took two union the set containing two. Well, if we were to write this out, uh, this is the set uh, containing zero and one union the set containing two, and, which is just the set containing zero, one, and two. And by the definitions we're using, this is three. Uh, and so by taking the union of the set containing uh, the number two and two itself, we obtained that uh, number plus one. So more generally, we're going to find that uh, if we were to take n and union the set containing n, uh, at least according to our definition uh, up above here, uh, this would give us the number n plus 1. Now I'm putting this, n, this plus in quotation marks though because we haven't really defined addition. Again, we're appealing to our intuitive notions. We're, we're, we're trying to recover our intuitive theory of numbers, uh, but we need to make sure all our symbols are well defined. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to write S N and call this the successor. And we're going to define it to be precisely this quantity. And we can think of it intuitively as n plus 1, but we're going to hold off uh, writing this until we define addition in greater generality. So for our set of natural numbers, uh, of course, we would like to be able to say that uh, 0 is a natural number. And we would also like to be able to say that if I have uh, any natural number n, then uh, I know that the successor of n is also a natural number. So how do I do this? How am I going to package all of this up into one set? 
we're going to say that a set i is inductive if it does contain the empty set, which we're denoting as zero in this case, uh, and if uh, whenever we have a set, uh, an element x of our set, then it's the case that the successor of that element, uh, again, just this is just defined as the element x union the set containing x, uh, also belongs to i. And believe it or not, we can't actually prove that any such set exists just using the axioms we're already considering. And so at this point, we need to make the introduction of a new axiom, which we call the axiom of infinity. Uh, this axiom is called of such, of course, because in the theory we've developed so far, everything's only allowed to us to construct sets with finitely many elements. This axiom essentially is, well, it's a bit stronger than this. It tells us that an inductive set exists, but uh, more so it, it will result in their existing sets which have infinitely many elements. So that's why we call this the uh, axiom of infinity. And this is simply that uh, an inductive set exists. So notice we simply say that an inductive set exists. We don't say how many, we don't say what they look like. Uh, it, it, we simply declare that there is some inductive set. And now we're going to define our set of integers. This is going to be the collection of all sets such that uh, x, uh, all sets x, such that x is contained in i for every inductive set. So we know that at least one inductive set exists, and from our definition, the empty set is contained in uh, this set i. So certainly we know that this set is non-empty. And furthermore, we know that it uh, satisfies this property such that if uh, n is in the natural numbers, then its successor will be in there uh, by the definition of uh, inductive. And in some sense, uh, since this is contained in every inductive set, uh, this is basically a, a minimal sort of element. We're not really getting any extra uh, baggage here. It's, it's the smallest possible inductive set that exists. So let's establish ourselves a lemma about the set now. Namely, we're going to prove that the set i itself uh, is inductive and that for every inductive set i, the natural numbers are a subset of i. So this is just making precise uh, what I had just mentioned. Uh, I is an inductive set, and in some sense, it is the smallest possible inductive set. Okay, time for the proof. First, we note that for all inductive sets I, uh, by definition, the empty set belongs to I, uh, and therefore we conclude that the empty set must, uh, by definition, belong to the natural numbers. Uh, furthermore, suppose some set we call N belongs to the natural numbers. So we let i uh, be some uh, inductive set. Uh, and this tells us from the condition uh, above that defines an inductive set, uh, that tells us that the successor of n must belong to the inductive set as well. Uh, but by the arbitrary selection of i, we know this holds for all inductive sets i. Uh, that is, uh, Sn, the successor of n, belongs to uh, the inductive set i uh, for every uh, uh, inductive set, and therefore the successor of n must belong to the natural numbers as well. So therefore, the natural numbers is in fact an inductive set itself. And then the second condition, uh, well, this is uh, clear from the very uh, definition of the inductive set. If I scroll back up a moment here, uh, the uh, the natural numbers, right, this is the collection of all elements uh, which belongs to every inductive set. Uh, so certainly this is a subset of any given inductive set. And now anyone who's taken some basic discrete mathematics knows that uh, induction is one of the most powerful proof techniques to prove anything about the integers. And so it ought to be the case that our theory also includes induction and that we can show this is a valid proof method uh, for the integers. 
So recall that the induction principle is the theorem that if we know we have some statement P depending on sets, and that statement is true for the empty set, and if it's the case that for all sets belonging to the natural numbers, uh, we know that uh, if it's to be true, if the statement is to be true for the set N, uh, then that implies that the set, uh, the statement is true for the set, uh, which is N plus one, or in our notation, the successor of one, uh, then this whole thing together implies that uh, P, the statement P is true for all sets uh, in the natural numbers. That is uh, for all natural numbers. And the proof of this is uh, basically immediate from what we've established. So if we consider the set A uh, to be the set of all N, which belong to the natural numbers, such that the statement uh, uh, P at N is true. Uh, well, notice uh, this, if we take the hypothesis of, uh, of the induction statement, uh, by our assumption, the statement is true for the empty set. Uh, therefore, the empty set belongs to A. Uh, and we're assuming that, uh, well, this is exactly the second uh, part of induction. That is, uh, if we were to have uh, some element N belonging to the set A, then the successor must belong to the set A. And therefore, uh, the set A is inductive. And so we know by the previous lemma that the natural numbers are contained in the set A. Uh, hence, we know that the statement P is true for all natural numbers. And before I leave it for today, uh, at the end of this video, I just want to uh, squeeze in a quick definition and lemma uh, that's going to be essential for the next video, which will take uh, a bit of time. So we're going to define an order relation. Of course, this is uh, with the intent to align with our already intuitive notion of the order on uh, natural numbers and in order to define what it means for one to be larger or smaller than the other. Uh, so we're going to say that two natural numbers M and N, uh, these uh, M is going to be uh, strictly less than N if and only if it's the case that uh, M interpreted as a set belongs to the natural number N interpreted as a set. Uh, recalling uh, from earlier in the video that we were thinking of the natural number n to be precisely the set of all natural numbers which were smaller than it. So the corresponding lemma that goes along with this has two parts to it. The first part says that uh, 0 is less than or equal to n for all natural numbers n, which is exactly uh, in line with our intuition about uh, the standard order on the natural numbers. And the second is that if we were to have any pair of integers k and n, then it is the case that if k were less than, strictly less than the successor of n, uh, well, this happens if and only if uh, k is strictly less than n itself or k is equal to n. Okay, so in order to prove this statement, we're actually going to make use of the principle of mathematical induction. So if we let P of X be the statement that zero is less than or equal to X, well, since zero is equal to zero, we certainly know that uh, P of zero is true. So now to imply induction, we're also going to suppose it's the case that uh, P of N is true for some N belonging to the natural numbers. So what this means is uh, precisely that N is uh, greater than or equal to zero. Well, if N is greater than or equal to zero, uh, what this means is that either zero is strictly less than N or zero is equal to N. In the case that zero is strictly less than n, this means that uh, 0 belongs to the set n. Well, if 0 belongs to the set n, uh, then this would imply that 0 belongs to the set n union the set n, uh, which is precisely the successor of 
n. And uh, in this case, we would have uh, that p of the successor of n is true, uh, as this tells us, uh, uh, by definition of our order, this tells us that zero is strictly less than n. Otherwise, if uh, zero is equal to n, well then, once again, we know that zero is contained in the union of these two sets, and therefore zero is contained in the successor. So once again, zero is strictly less than uh, the successor of n, uh, which means that it is certainly less than or equal to the successor of n. So we find that in fact, uh, the statement for the successor of n is true, and we conclude that it holds for all natural numbers. To prove the second uh, statement here, uh, we simply note that k being less than, uh, strictly less than the successor of n, well, this is equivalent to saying that k is in the uh, expanding out what it means to be the successor of n. This is n union the set containing n. And this is equivalent to saying that either uh, k is in n uh, or k is equal to n. Because the other possibility is that k is in the set containing n, which only has one element, which must mean that k and n are the same. But this statement, uh, by our definition of order, is equivalent to saying that k is strictly less than n or that k is equal to n. Uh, but finally, this is simply what we mean by k being less than or equal to n. So this concludes the final lemma in this video. In the next video, we're going to look closer at this order relation on the natural numbers. We're going to prove that it's a, a linear order. And in fact, we're going to go on to show that it is a well ordering.